Hey guys, and welcome to Should You Buy It, where all we do is talk a little bit about the game and whether or not we think it's worth the cost. In this episode, we'll be playing Nikesi, the top-down sandbox-style survival game set in a procedurally generated world where you will have to fight, mine, explore, and craft your way through its many adventures. Now the first question that we always cover in these videos is what stage of development is the game in? And in this case, Nikesi is currently in early access and available on PC for $10. So what exactly is the game? Well, Nikesi is a survival game which has been clearly influenced by many previous game titles such as Terraria, Stardew Valley, and RimWorld. Nikesi is a Terraria-style game with a top-down view. Just like Terraria, it's not focused on the hunger elements of survival, but instead focuses on the progression elements. You have several bosses currently in the game and will need to clear most of them in order to progress to the later stages of the game and actually get to fight some of the harder endgame bosses. In order to fully understand this though, let me just go ahead and break it down for you. You are given a quest by the quest giver who lives on your starting island. The quest will send you to a specific biome's cave where you will need to kill a mob or gather some material. After you turn it in, you will be given a quest to go and kill the boss that corresponds to that region. This cycle will then rinse and repeat all the way up to the game's current final boss. The reason I say current is because the game is still in development. There is a lot that still needs to be added to the game, but the foundation for most of the mechanics is already implemented and very well executed. Everything from the boss fights to the multiplayer balancing felt pretty well put together and almost as if it was a completely finished product. Speaking of which, let's go ahead and take a few minutes to talk about the combat, settlement management, and raid systems. The combat once again takes heavy inspiration from games like Terraria. This is because you have armor sets and weapons that correspond to some kind of build. You could play a melee with a melee armor set and pump out tons of damage with high armor up close and in their face, or you could be an archer doing high damage crits from a relatively safe distance. Then again, maybe you're just a bit like me and just too lazy to kill anything yourself, so you decide to use a summoning build since the things you summon will fight your target for you. The idea is that no matter what playstyle you like, it's most likely going to be accommodated with several different types of armor, weapons, and trinkets. Now we have to mention where the game starts to differentiate itself from the many different Terraria clones that are already out there. To me, this is in the settlement management and raid systems. You see, you can actually build rooms and go to neighboring islands where you'll be able to hire townspeople who specialize in many different things. These townspeople could be farmers that will help you grow and fertilize your crops, husbandry specialists to take care of your animals, fishermen to collect fish which are used in potions and food, wizards to enchant your gear, blacksmiths to sell ore in bars to, gunsmiths to work on crafting stations and purchase weapons from, and guards to defend your settlement from nearby enemies at night or even during raids. This system doesn't stop there though, as you can even give each settler priorities so that they will focus on specific tasks. Then there's a whole subsystem where you can mark chests to have only specific items in them. We actually made a whole organization system where if we dropped an item on the ground or into a designated chest, the villagers would automatically go and organize it all for us. Let's just say as someone who has a lot of friends who hate to store their loot in an organized way, this was incredibly helpful. Now the raid system itself is actually pretty straightforward. Every so often you will be attacked by a bunch of raiders. They will then spawn on the edge of the map and after a short while will proceed to assault your settlement. They seem to vary quite a bit in difficulty, but it's worth mentioning that the developers stated that the raids have been very difficult for them to balance. It is a really cool system, but some people just don't like it, and if that's the case for you, you can just turn it off so that you don't have to worry about it. Now before we move into the pros and cons, we would like to mention one of our favorite places to buy games, which is Humble Bundle. Now aside from the fact that you can purchase basically any game for PC and console all in one place, and the fact that becoming a Humble Bundle member will earn you tons of free games every month and give you great discounts on purchases, Humble Bundle also gives you the ability to donate to a great cause and help support this channel. If you are interested in getting some great deals on games while supporting charity, check out our link in the description below. With that being said, first up for the pros is the game's concept. The concept of Nikesi is Terraria mixed with RimWorld mixed with Stardew Valley, which is a great recipe for success. The game takes the best elements from each game while reworking or replacing the worst from each. After that is the ability to change the difficulty. Nikesi can be a hard game and an easy game. The great thing though is that if you're halfway through a playthrough, 
you can always change the difficulty settings to better fit your playstyle. Thankfully, this means there's no need to start a whole new world just to change the difficulty. Next up for the pros is the bosses. The bosses in Nikesi are some of the most exciting parts of the game. Each boss has unique mechanics that require you to deal with them in different ways. Then, when you're fighting them in groups, the mechanics feel a bit different, creating a sense of chaos, since the boss's abilities tend not to move in a standard pattern quite as much. Not trying to spoil anything here, but here's a quick taste of what you can expect. And lastly is the fact that the game is still in early access. And I know many of you will hear this pro and think I'm dumb for liking that a game is still in early access, but just hear me out. The fact that it's in early access and already has so many interesting features, and the game being incredibly fun to play already, just means that the devs want to put even more content into the game, which is a good thing for us as players. Now for the cons. Now we really only have two cons for you today, and the first one is that the progression just feels a bit unrequired, and let me clarify what I mean by this. What we mean is that you don't have to grind the previous tiers of armor or weapons to make the next boss more manageable. Well, yes, it does help ever so slightly, if you get a good set of armor, you can go through most of the game's early game bosses and even the late game bosses without having to change your gear very often. Secondly for the cons is that some mechanics such as the city management definitely could use a little bit more depth. If you're like me and you've played RimWorld before, you do expect a little bit more depth with this system, but to be fair, this isn't RimWorld and it is not only a city management game. Granted, it's also only a $10 title, I would just like to see that the game has a little bit more depth to the city management, maybe just add in some different things that NPCs can do on top of what's already in the game, or maybe just give them more of a purpose other than just hauling stuff around, maybe make the happiness matter more, there's a lot of different ways they could change it, but overall, I would just like to see more depth added to the system. So now it's time for the rating for the game, and when we rate games, we want to get one hour of enjoyment out of every one dollar that we spend on the game. So for this game in particular, in Nikesi, we would want to get roughly 10 hours of enjoyment out of the 10 dollars that we spent. And after putting 24 played hours into this game, we give it 9 out of 10 potatoes. Nikesi, to put it simply, was a major hidden gem for us. While yes, it does have a few minor issues, the game is still in development, and therefore we can hope to see most of those things be fixed in the future. The whole idea of trying to fit RimWorld into a Terraria-style game with a Stardew Valley top-down perspective is quite frankly an awesome idea, and it's an amazing experience to play through. The bosses felt fun and challenging enough to where you can't just not be ready for them, while the different armor sets and weapons all felt interesting to use and effective to play. If you're like me though, and you play a lot of these kinds of games, then I'd recommend that you turn the difficulty up by at least one notch, just to give yourself an even more challenging experience. With that being said though, I think it's safe to say that Nikesi is without a doubt worth the cost. Before you guys go, thank you so much for watching, and if you did enjoy the video, make sure you smash that like button and subscribe for more survival game content. A big shout out to all of our members and subscribers, and don't forget to check out our links in the description below for things like our music library and Epic Games Creator Code, as these are just ways for you to help support the channel. Otherwise, thank you again so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.